Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I want to go ahead and bring you guys probably the final, if not one of the closer to final videos for the RF Jug progression. So we are 97, almost level 98. And uh, I apologize for the gap in days. I just didn't have enough content and was a bit tired. But boy, did we get a shit ton of upgrades. So much progression um, down pretty much all the end game. I still have to get like my... Uh, my favorites but that's not really a big deal right now um and on top of that we got our legacy of fury so another big thing is, is i did a massive atlas respec now that i'm not like progressing um i have a command for this in my stream under the ssf atlas command uh, it's essentially a grand design setup or pack size i also have expedition but i don't really like expedition but i'm trying to learn to like expedition so it's currently like expedition harvest and a bunch of other random stuff so what grand design does is every time you allocate a notable you get the notable and you get one percent pack size so this is how i'm leveling uh with that being said this is just an alk and go setup so uh enjoy One of the big ones is if I proc Delirium. Oh, hey, look, Delirium. Delirium adds very, very, very good density for this setup because of the pack size scaling. I am very impressed that my Jug is able to do this type of content without being block based and I don't even have a good shield. I'm still wearing that exact same shield I showed you guys in the previous videos, so it's not even a max res shield. You can see that even when Jug is geared in an SSF environment, uh, it's got pretty good clear for tier 16 delirium content. It's really not that bad. Legacy of Fury, of course, is doing a lot of the heavy work right here, but I also don't have any awakened gems, so I think that's fair to point out as well. Map currency. Wait, Icker? You'll give me them Ickers. Mm -hmm. I've also done some minor skill tree adjustments based off of kind of what I'm doing at the time. So, since my focus right now is primarily leveling, I have specced additional AoE notes. Hey, look, Harvest. I'd show you the Grand Design Harvest, but I don't really. I don't really think it matters too much, it's just a little bit of extra time. Although, actually, this does bring up a good point of whenever you get Delirium on here, it's nice because you can just literally walk around and proc the Delirium of the whole zone, which is usually quite a few monsters. So one of the cons with Grand Design is it is harder to sustain maps because you don't have any of those little baby nodes for map sustain. So to help alleviate that, um, I have went into league mechanics that add extra density. I know that seems a little bit silly. Wait a minute, do we? Huh. Uh, I have went into um, stuff that adds extra density. So like Delirium. Um, this one's kind of weird, but like Expedition. Even Harvest. And these aren't really like good ways to sustain your maps, but it's just adding extra mobs. More mobs equals chance at a map drop. Getting a map drop means you get the whole map back, right? So, also, these are more so, these are more like mechanics that I want to farm and use. I'm trying to get better at the new harvest crafting since I don't really think it's going to change much. So, may as well kind of just learn the new system. Um, Rog, I'm sure, is going to give me a significantly better amulet and or a better shield. Uh, so, that's something we're going to mess with. I'll show you guys my gear after this. We also finally dinged a 21 Righteous Fire after quite a long time. We've had a 21 RF for quite a bit, but the 21 um, RF finally popped up. Yeah, 21 Fire Trap I've had for a bit. The Righteous Fire gem we just recently got. Ooh, that was unlucky on Life Force. That's all right. I have also dropped the Ascendancy on Yielding, which is the AoE per Endurance Charge. Uh, and the reason for that is we have opted out in a more, I guess you could say, speedy setup where I'm not getting slowed as much. And that is by via taking Unstoppable. 
That also allows me to switch my Pantheon to Arakali, because Unstoppable makes it so even if you are frozen, you are not affected by Freeze, basically. Single target on this character feels really good. We have gotten much better now with it. Um, I would say our single target, I think, is just shy of 3 million. Um, it may be a little bit lower if you import my character right now, just because, again, I expect into some AoE nodes, but I think we're sitting at about 2.8 million uh, boss damage, which is not too bad, considering how tanky the character is. Invitations feel very smooth. I was farming uh, Guardian Invitations for a little bit. Very, very smooth on the character so far. The only thing I will say that's weird is bosses with penetration right now absolutely dick my character. So like a Shaper Ball can literally one-shot me because if a skill penetrates your resistance, then what occurs is Unbreakable has less value because when the hit is bigger, your armor is less effective. And since I don't have crazy amounts of armor, that less effectiveness is huge. Uh, but I mean, it's not really a, a, like that big of a deal. It just, for hardcore players, I can see it like really sucking. I'm sure you would absolutely want to use this Apple's Frame or bosses like Shaper and other just very heavy bosses, right? Because you would have, with Tempest Shield, you would have over 50 spell block. The bosses don't do chaos, so it's just a massive straight upgrade. All right, map is cleared. Let's talk about the upgrades. So, um, I ended up getting my SSF weapon for this league. Very, very happy with it. Uh, exact same way we crafted it on the website. So, same thing from last league. Your basic TLDR is you're going to be doing your fire gem recipe to get your plus one fire gem. Then you're going to augment hoping for something usable. If you get super lucky and get dot multi like me, um, at least in SSF, what I did is I went and farmed a massive amount of bestiary missions. I want to say my Atlas was full bestiary with um, uh, Cryocene because I believe this was the beast I needed. Um, and it took me over 75 missions to get an imprint. So I imprinted it because it was plus one fire with dot multi. Um, we regaled and hit the fire damage and that was good enough so that I multi-modded fire multi and then the chance to ignite fire damage. New ring. Um, I was really looking for a new ring. I didn't know how to replace my other one, especially because I had chaos resin decks and that's two really hard suffixes to get uh, on occasion. So guess what? I dropped a fractured dex ring which was great because now when I go over here at Harvest, if you actually do Chaos, this says including a Chaos modifier. So what's interesting about this is if you were to look at this ring, check it out, Chaos Res. Why? Check it out, Chaos Res. Why? Well, that would be because there's only one modifier, I'm pretty sure, on rings, and it's Chaos Res. I could be wrong, there might be another modifier, but if there is, I don't really ever see it. So if you get a fractured ring with, this, with a suffix, you can basically guarantee Chaos Res via doing this. Now, as a jug, I would probably want Essence of Delirium rings, but this will do for now, no problem. Okay, um, same exact shield as we had last time. This is the one I was talking about I really wanna replace. Um, it's just a little tricky to replace right now because it gives 35% Chaos Res. Um, amulet, so I actually crafted my amulet through sheer RNG. Some of you guys may have seen the Reddit clip, Essentially, I needed dex, so <clears throat> I came over here and used the dexterity essence, 43 to 50 dex, closed my eyes, I asked Chris Wilson for plus one fire gems, and the cheeky bastard actually gave it to me. It did have a spell damage prefix, so I annulled and got lucky and then crafted life. Um, yeah, very, very, very lucky. My belt. <clears throat> belt was crafted in a similar fashion. Uh, I did... Chaos Res, so essentially I was using my Deafening Essence of Envy. Uh, you should probably use Shrieking, but I had Deafening, so I was using Deafening. And I ended up hitting Life Regeneration, Flash Charges Gained, um, Life, and then even Energy Shield. And then I had a 9 armor roll, so I closed my eyes, you know, went with the Vision, annulled, and annulled off the armor, and then crafted a new armor roll, so I gained like 200 flat armor. And then the last one would be my, well, actually, no, there's two more, my um, gauntlets. So these were actually straight up ID'd with a wisdom scroll. So tier one life regenerate, tier two fire res, tier three flat life regen, tier one life roll, uh, an actual armor roll, and then prefix open for plus one area gems. And we got our fire exposure and our fire multi. Now, <clears throat> the thing about these gloves is I was trying to figure out how many items I've actually been identifying in SSF. 
and I was looking at the difference between my whetstones and my armor scraps. And there's like 4,000 in there. So just from identifying with whetstones, I have ID'd over 16,000 items. Probably significantly more because I do on occasion sell transmutations. And I do still pick up wisdom scrolls because I did not turn them off my filter. And I just go through it really fast. Like I notice myself switching my wisdoms, like refilling my wisdom scroll like every other, every three maps maybe. Especially if I proc Ruckus on my Atlas right here. Uh, Ruckus with the 20 rogue exiles all being possessed just poop out accessories and I'm always going to ID them, right? Okay, last piece, the, uh, the chest piece. So I got this chest piece via Chains That Bind. Unfortunately, it's not super good base right now, but it is a six link and it does get us going. The stats are pretty nice, but yeah. So this was redeemed via Chains That Bind. So I farmed pen for this map. I'm going to just open up my div cards. So that would be this one right here, the six link body armor. So what I did to craft this chest piece is I quite literally, I gave it the, uh, I gave it the league start method, the top 10. I just threw whatever the hell I had on it because I wanted it to get crafted. So I was throwing out life essences via greed. I was throwing out the armor essences, which are the essence of dread. I was throwing out the chaos res, which was the envy. Uh, I was just throwing, I was scour alking. I just wanted to get a usable chess piece. And this is kind of what we landed. I don't even remember what I did. I feel like it was a scour alk. I do know for a fact that I exalted the life regen on this chest piece though. Now, the more important part is how to get the off colors. So I would Google Verici calculator if you want to be efficient here. I was not. I was just manually chroming my chest piece until I hit three off colors. Then with Jun, I was putting Verici in research and running it and hoping that one of the reds would hit a white socket so then it would be four off color and that's pretty much the gearing of the character right now very very fun i would say the <clears throat> the closest thing that i would get to changing out my gear right now i'd be looking for a new amulet a new belt potentially a new ring or or i did find fractured 20 percent life regen gloves but the armor is really poopy but that potentially leaves room for a chaos res roll with another res roll which would be better than these gloves but then i have to get the new eldritch implicits all right so to talk about my character tree and then we're going to go ahead and jump over to the atlas so we have fit in skitterbots in our most recent edition the so skitterbots was acquired via two golden oils in ssf um shit it just never really ends so to explain the golden oil in ssf real fast Oh, my explorer just crashed. I actually cannot show it to you. That's weird. Wait, wait. Oh, never mind. It didn't crash. It just froze. Okay, so golden oils and SSF. So a quick trick on what you can do with golden oils is I'm going to have this string posted in my comments so you can look. But essentially what I did here is I... Hold on a minute here. Okay, perfect. So I went full blight with my atlas. Full Blight with my Atlas. So essentially there is this node here called <clears throat> your uh, Blight chest in your maps have a 10% chance to contain an oil extractor. An oil extractor is used to pull an oil out of what you anointed with. So there's this string I have, right? Where basically with the string, why is it not working? Here we go. So there's four strings. And when you type the string in, it's going to highlight anything that, that requires a golden oil. So you basically use all four strings, whatever you get a golden oil on, you pull to the side, and then you use your oil extractor right here to pull it out and hope you get a golden oil. I didn't even run any of my blighted maps as an example. I just put in like 20 blight scarabs, maybe not even. And we, yeah, we got our gold. We got two golden oils. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's go back to the character. So I ended up op optimizing my tree. I removed the cluster. It was not actually worth it right now. Uh, I instead just went into some AoE nodes over here, the AoE over here, and I actually went back into the minion damage scaling because it was more efficient for me right now. Um, furthermore, with this exact character right now, I removed these four points from, from Heart of Flame, and I went into Explosive Impact. It is a single target damage loss, but I get 20% AoE, and I'm currently farming, so that's really what I want. Down over here, you can see I went one two three four five then the reservation mastery six and then i also took determination mono reservation mastery seven 
and then I anointed Charisma, which is what allows me to run Skitterbot for the massive damage bonus. All right, I think that is pretty much it. I, no, 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 we got the Atlas. Yeah, 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 we got the Atlas, and we're done. So, uh, so the Atlas over here is themed around a keystone called Grand Design. So the purpose of this, right, is taking anything from two to three points of efficiency to get 1% pack size. So an example of a two-pointer would be like two-pointer, right? An example, or like two-pointer. Technically, this is a three-pointer because it's one, two, three. Um, but yeah, also with this grand design setup, again, I am farming Delirium for density, Harvest for juice. Um, I have Abyss on here because it's six points. Yeah, so Abyss is six points, but it gives really good density. It can help with map sustain. And then expedition for hopes at, you know, attempting to rog craft some better gear. And then also, this is an interesting one, Trial of Glory. You can actually see when the Trial of Glory is on your map. So whenever you get an empowered offering, you can just go run it for a chance of like dedication of the goddess for the seven times enchant or whatever. All right. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. I don't think I really changed anything else. Um, for the gem that I dropped to fit in Skitterbots, I had Arcane Surge on Molten Shell, so I removed that and just slapped in Skitterbots right here. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. Sorry for the lengthy video. I, I tried to, you know, one-take everything there. So, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Of course, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, but Mondays. See you guys all tomorrow.